Hello everybody, I'm Dana Shove, editor of Civil War Times Magazine. I'm here with Melissa Wynn, director of photography, and special guest Eric Nelson, who I'll introduce again in just a second. Today we are in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Of course, the Battle of Fredericksburg was fought December 11th through 15th, 1862. One of the major battles of the Eastern Theater pitted Ambrose Burnside's Army of the Potomac against Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia. And of course, the famous story, of course, is that the Federals made numerous assaults against the Confederates on the high ground beyond Fredericksburg and were repulsed with 12,000 and some casualties. A very high butcher's bill for the North. About 18,000 or so casualties, I think, in the entire battle. But the reason we're starting early today, it's not noon, because this is a first for First Mondays. We are high, and I mean high, above Princess Anne Street in downtown Fredericksburg, in the cupola of the old courthouse that was built in 1852, and Eric can tell us a little bit more about that in a second. This site has great relevance to the battle, and the reason we're starting early is because it took us climbing three or four steps, sets of basically vertical ladders in a heart-pounding uh, sort of climb up here to this top of this old cupola. I'm standing next to a huge beam that was used to hoist the courthouse bell up here, and it's still right below me, and you said it was a... It's from the Revere Foundry. The Revere Foundry in Massachusetts, of course, famous Paul Revere's family eventually. Right. Um, and, of course, Revere cast a lot of Napoleon cannons during the Civil War. You know, there's, you'll see Revere on a lot of muzzles of Napoleon. The bell was put up here in 1852. 1828. It was cast in 1828. Oh, I'm sorry. Cast in 1828. And put here when the court house. And this was built in 52, and that's when it was put there. Okay. Yeah. And if you said it's one of the few Revere bells outside of New England. Right. There's like 247 uh, Revere bells, and all but 27 are out. Are, are out. Every, all but 27, 27 are outside New England. Yeah. So. Yeah. So there's not many outside of New England. Right. That's right. right below. So we're above the bell. Okay. That's how high we are in this courthouse. We're above the bell. Now we don't have our microphones because we got up here. And Melissa said, oh, I don't have the microphones. I said, I don't want you to go all the way back down to planet Earth to get them. You know, basically, we're in the stratosphere here. So let's just go without them, and hopefully you can hear them OK. So this cupola is not open to the public, obviously. But during the Battle of Fredericksburg, it served as a Union signal station. Yes. And also, Major General Darius Couch, commander of the Union Second Corps of the Army of the Potomac, was in this cupola watching his first two divisions, which was William French and Winfield Scott Hancock's divisions, attacking Mary's Heights that was held by Longstreet's men. Lieutenant General James Longstreet's soldiers were, of course, on the Heights. Couch was up here with Oliver O. Howard, his other division commander. Right. And at one point, right, Eric? Couch is watching his first two divisions attack, and he says they're melting away like, like snow landing on warm ground. Right. He right. could see them being devastated. Now, Eric, why don't you show this sketch that was done from this location. Melissa, I don't know if you could get in close so people can see it. And Eric, you could talk about what you can see on there. Maybe, maybe I'll... <laughs> there we go. Sure. This right. is an Alfred Wode sketch. Right. What we're looking... This is, uh, t this is drawn from this location. And what you're, you're looking at is the... Uh, Federal columns advancing out Hanover Street, which is half a block uh, away, and advancing out Hanover Street, where they had to cross the canal ditch, and that's also shown uh, in this area. And then the heights held by the Confederates, so they they attacked the heights, and of course uh, didn't didn't get close. And so this is a, a panoramic view of that uh, of, of the of the scene, which is visible from up here. Uh, because of course they were up here where they could see over the rooftops of the town uh, to the battlefield beyond. And so, so and now Melissa's going to go over to this louver. Be careful because there's a gap. And basically, you can kind of narrate there what you see, Eric. But that's looking toward Marie's Heights. Right. You're looking toward. Uh, it's it's a little bit to the uh, to the north of Marie's Heights. Uh, you're looking at where. Uh, you want to turn slightly to the to the left, Melissa, if you can. 
Just whatever you can, right. you know, whatever right. you can well, see so, there. So you're seeing, uh, th that is the heights, and that was a position held by artillery. Uh, there was uh, infantry at the base. Uh, but if we move over to the other louver, we can now we watch can see yeah, the actual yeah. battlefield. Okay, so th she's looking through the louvers now, right. and that's Marie's Heights. And this is this is the viewpoint of the sketch that we just looked at. You can see the heights of or the the rooftops of the Hanover Street houses. Oh, there is a cedar tree in the way there, but the the from left to right is was the advance of the Union columns out Hanover Street, which took them down to the. Uh, where there used to be a bridge across the across the canal ditch, and so many of those houses are are original, are Civil War uh, Civil War structures, and then beyond that is the again Marie's Heights held by Longstreet's Corps. Yes, and so you, Melissa's getting a good view of, and you can imagine the single men looking at that. Also, Darius Couch watching his divisions attack that ground. Right. right. All right. Now, Melissa, shift over here. Carefully out that other louver. Watch the opening. Watch everything here. Okay. Now, can you kind of narrate what she's seeing there? Sure. What what you're looking at across the river, across the uh, uh, above that that light building is Chatham Chatham Manor, the Lacey House. That was uh, a Union headquarters, a Union hospital, and that was a. Uh, uh, it's now the headquarters of the National Park Service uh, in this area. And it was a, uh, again, a colonial era home. It was, uh, uh, George Washington uh, has been there, uh, certainly uh, Lee and, and several others. Uh, so it's, it's a, a well-visited home and it's a prominent, uh, prominent brick structure overlooking the city from the Stafford side of the Rappahannock River. And again, it's just above the, uh, that white uh, or that light colored building with the flat roof. So basically, uh, over in Chatham, Burnside, Major General Ambrose Burnside, Army of the Potomac Commander, is watching the battle along with uh, William Sumner. Right. And William Sumner was the command of the right grand division, and he was in charge of the second corps. And what was the other corps? I forget. Oh, uh, there was. Was that the fifth corps? I, I'm trying to remember of the grand division. Well, two corps each. Two corps each. We're having brain lapses here, <laughs> but they divided the it's army the thin into, air. into these. These. Uh, it's a thin air. Yeah, we can barely breathe the air so they were so high. Uh, so this, anyway, Sumner is in command of Couch's uh, corps and another corps. So the signalmen up here are sending signals over to Burnside and Sumner, right, right. letting them know how these Second Corps attacks are going right. and that they're failing, basically. So this is a fantastic place to be, and it's Gothic Revival. You can see the arched windows here. Uh, you, and I'm telling you, it was an expedition to get up here, but wow, what a view you can see, and I hope you can see some of that through our camera. Now, before we go, Eric, uh, what is your position with the city of Fredericksburg? I'm a transportation planner. He, okay. Eric's a transportation planner, and he. Uh, we're going to talk to Eric Mink from the National Park Service later. Eric helped us get up here, which we greatly, greatly appreciate. And you're a former president of the Central Virginia Battlefields Trust, right? Right, right, right. We, uh, we began our, uh, our operations in 1996. We were able to, our first project was to acquire a property on Marie's Heights, actually, um, and, and that, that has since been incorporated into the National Park and then uh, been in operation ever since then. Yeah, and um, what's the web address for that? Oh my gosh, uh, www.cvbt.org? Yeah, www.cvbt, Central Virginia Battlefields Trust.org. And you guys have worked, uh, you saved a lot of land from the peninsula. Right? Haven't you been down there doing some stuff on the peninsula? That would be the, the American Battlefield. Oh, okay. We, we, uh, but you, I know you've done stuff around the wilderness and right. Chancellorsville. We, we focused on the Central Virginia, the okay. battlefields in this area yes. specifically. Which, there's how much fighting takes place in this right. area. Tremendous amount between Fredericksburg, Chancellorsville, the wilderness. Unbelievable. Right. And they have done great work. They have done great work down here. So check them out. And they've worked with the ABT on certain projects right. and they've partnered right. with people. Right. So you get a chance to check out their website. It's a great organization. Before we go, I want Melissa, if she could carefully walk over and just shoot down that little opening, and you can get a sense of the ladders that we had to climb to get up here and the openings. I barely fit through that thing. 
<laughs> that's the bell level. So, uh, yeah. You can kind of see the bell. You can kind of see the bell down there. We took some still pictures we'll put on our Facebook page later of the bell and everything. All right, folks, so we're going to bring you a couple more things at least from Fredericksburg. We're going to show you the outside of this building from the street is going to be our next little vignette. And we'll wait till noon to do that because I know many people wait for us to start at noon. But like I said, once we got up here, I was like, we're not going to go back down and back up. We're just going to roll now and let people know it's up, okay? So for now, this is Dana Schoaf and Melissa Wynn from Civil War Times with Eric Nelson, transportation planner for the city of Fredericksburg and Civil War Pre preservationist. We're signing off from the stratosphere of Fredericksburg in the old courthouse building, Cupola. See you in a few minutes. Bye-bye.